Yo, I gotta make an apology first of all to Joss Whedon, to Danny Elfman, because you guys did a fantastic job on this movie. A fantastic job on this movie. Um, I just saw I just saw Justice League, man, <laughs> man, <laughs> man, yo, yo, man. This is an excellent end. Excellent end to the Zack Snyder trilogy. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be a non-spoiler review. It's going to be real quick, but still, it's going to be a non-spoiler review of Justice League. And I'm going to tell you guys right now. I'm going to let you guys know right now that uh, I loved, I loved Justice League. I loved it. Can't go into details. But I love Justice League. You couldn't do it better. You couldn't do it better. It was just the right length. Uh, it moved along a little bit quicker, but I, most of the people's complaints I heard was that they didn't get enough of whatever, whether it's a character or whatever. Um, off the bat, you could tell, uh, again, it's not a problem really for me, but you could tell off the bat where some things were CG, but they were unapologetically CG, and it fit into the world, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I get where people were talking about the CG being a little bit rough. It didn't take away from the story for me. Uh, Zack Snyder's story. This is a Zack Snyder film. This is a Zack Snyder film. People, be assured this is a Zack Snyder film. It does have layers to it. I have to go see this movie again because it's, it's a lot of stuff I missed in the first viewing. But it's a lot more straightforward. This movie, I can't rate it yet. I can't rate it. It's definitely better than Suicide Squad. Definitely. All right. It's a follow up of Wonder Woman. It's a follow up of BVS. OK, it literally is a sequel to BVS. Um, everything that had to do with BVS does relate to this movie. It is a standalone. But what happened in BVS is related to this movie. What happened in Wonder Woman is related to this movie. So you understand Wonder Woman's past and everything. It, it, it down pack, man. Man, this is not Thor Ragnarok. For those of you people who feel this movie would be like Thor Ragnarok, you know, jokes, jokes, jokes. This is not that kind of movie. Um, <laughs> I can't spoil the movie. I, I, I can't, listen, I can't wait. I can't wait to give spoilers on this movie. I can't wait to spoil this movie for you guys and discuss spoilers because this movie, man, you couldn't get it closer to the Justice League, you know. You talk about Justice League in the animated films. You talk about Justice League in the comic books. This is that. Zack Snyder captured that. Joss Whedon refined it, pruned it, executed it to a T. I mean, what I saw on the screen had me through various emotions. Actually, in the beginning, the story was pretty weighty. And I actually wanted to cry a couple times, like in Wonder Woman. There were a number of times in this movie where I wanted to cry. It was weird. Real weird. And then at other times in this movie, you're going to go through different spectrums of emotion. I, I went through different spectrums of emotion because I'm not a hee hee ha ha kind of guy. You, you guys know this already. And not, I will say this though, Barry Allen, not every joke Barry, Barry Allen is supposed to be this situational humor of landed for me. But Barry Allen is fantastic in this movie. The Flash is fantastic in this movie but I wouldn't say in my opinion I wouldn't say that he stole the show now a lot of people would think he stole the show because they were laughing at a lot of things he said not all the things he said I laughed at because I'm a more serious minded person so I don't you can't get me to laugh just like that if I burst out laughing you know it's funny <laughs> so um, but oh my gosh man but I gotta say Aquaman you gotta love Aquaman. I know people were not go didn't get enough of Aquaman, but I love what they did with Aquaman in this movie, and I love that he's not Aquaman. He's not really Aquaman. He's Arthur Curry, right? <laughs> so much to this thing. Now they give you little 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 tidbits of each character, little bits and pieces. It's not it's not a back full backstory. It's not a full it's not a full story arc. It's kind of like Suicide Squad in that respect. It's not a full story arc, but what you get of the characters. Is sufficient for the story. Now, people, I, I knew the critics were wrong on this. I knew the critics were wrong on this. They said that this 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 movie was a was a it was a beautiful mess. No, nah, 
It's not a beautiful mess, folks. <laughs> the story is very streamlined. It keeps moving at certain times very rapidly, and then it slows down a bit at certain points in the film. But I will tell you this about uh, the film that I, lo I, I truly love about this film that nobody has commented on. It is the gravity of the emotion put behind the philosophy of the heroes. Let me just put it that way because I can't spoil it. Uh, when, when we go into spoilers, I'll be able to say exactly what I mean. And it is a continuity of the trilogy. And it culminates in this final film. And Josh Whedon, I'm going to say this about Josh Whedon. You know, I gave Josh Whedon a lot of flack. People cursed out Josh Whedon. All kinds of things happened to Josh Whedon. But I'm going to say this about, to Josh Whedon. Josh Whedon, you did one freaking hell of a job on this film. I don't care what nobody say. This, this guy here is going to tell it. You did one freaking hell of a job on this film. Cutting it down to under two hours. This film, well, it was a little bit over two hours because, you know, I'm not going to tell. Yeah, stay for the post credit scenes. There are two, I know everybody has been saying this. There are two post credit scenes at the end of this movie, right? And both of them have to do with the comics. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right? Um, I don't think I spoiled anything by saying that. Um... I think that there's so much nuance in this 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 film Justice League. There's so much nuance to it. And another thing I love about Justice League, unlike Thor Ragnarok, and I, I don't hate Thor Ragnarok, I don't hate nobody, but there's a tension throughout this movie. You feel a sense of danger throughout this movie. If you're following the story, you're gonna feel that tension continuously, and you know, people were saying that Steppenwolf was a weak villain. I disagree. I really, I, I respectfully disagree. Steppenwolf, not only is he powerful, which is, you know, it kind of goes without saying. Most villains are powerful, right? But the other thing about Steppenwolf in this movie, I, I'm smiling because something just went through my head and I just can't, I can't talk it, you know. But um, another thing that's really cool about Steppenwolf in this movie is the fact that besides him being when he needs to be ruthless, when he needs to be, well, he's ruthless. He's ruthless. And he's trying to move in a certain kind of way. Besides that, the nice thing about Steppenwolf, it's a nuance. Again, you have to understand nuance in, in movies. The nice thing about Steppenwolf in this movie that makes him separate to the other villains we have seen is the fact that he shares a commonality and his parademons share a commonality with, I don't want to, just say that it's something related to BVS. Something related, I don't know, you make of it what you will. But something related to BVS, um, Steppenwolf shares in this universe. And you'll be, something you, you, you may not have picked up, but I did. I picked it up. And I thought it was just awesome how they were able to stream BVS into the, I'm not going to say what it is. I'm going to leave you guys scratching your heads. For those who have seen the movie, and you are deep thinkers. I'm pretty sure you're gonna you pick up on what I'm saying. But for those of you who are not, uh, it's a nuance in there. There's a lot about heroes that this movie covers. A lot about them, and I appreciate that. I understand what Josh Whedon was doing as well, and I understand what Warner Brothers was going now. And I also want to give an apology to Warner Brothers and even to uh, the Japanese executive i apologize warner brothers i apologize the japanese executive y'all knew what exactly what y'all were doing uh i see what you did i see what you did i got you there i got you i, I got you like Zack snyder said you know they would say well, but, but, but what superman dies but what and then he says you know but we'll call it dawn of justice and they were like ah i see what you're doing now i get it now i get it and Zack snyder did a lot of work on this movie man it's it's almost in you know, I was saying this is Zack and Joss Whedon's movie. Or, not Zack and Joss Whedon, but, 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 but I said it was Zack's movie. But I said, you know, you got to give Joss Whedon credit. Shit, man. Almost the entire movie is Zack Snyder's movie. When they said 20%, it, I couldn't even pick up. Well, there were certain places where I could pick up. It was Joss Whedon that did certain things. I could tell where Joss Whedon added in. 
uh, rerouted some of Zach's dialogue with the characters, I saw where he did it. it was certain places I could tell, but other places I couldn't tell. And um, I didn't really care, really, because the story was so gripping. And I was like trying to figure out, I was trying to get ahead of the story to figure out what was going on. Um, and there's so much I still have to go back and process because I've only seen this movie once. I bought one ticket. I should have bought two. But I'm glad I didn't buy two because um, time constraints and all of that. I'm going to go let the movie marinate in my head a little bit. And then I'll come back uh, maybe Saturday night, maybe Sunday. Uh, I got to go out with my brother. I got to watch Thor Ragnarok again. So I got to go watch it. Hey, Marvel, even though I didn't like Thor Ragnarok, I am putting my dollars towards you guys and much love to you guys because if you guys didn't put out the avengers we wouldn't have justice league today and i just want to shout out to marvel and, and show y'all there's nothing but love out here and even though i didn't like thor ragnarok doesn't mean nothing i'm gonna pay for it and again because my brother's gonna my brother's gonna like the shit out of thor ragnarok okay i didn't like it all right because i'm it's just it's just me don't don't worry about it i just don't like those kinds of movies I don't like comic book movies, really. I'm not really a comic book movie fan. I got back into comic books because of Zack Snyder. So don't really feel a how about it. You're not losing anybody. You know what I'm saying? Did love Captain America the First Avenger, though. Shout out to Marvel when y'all did Captain America First Avenger. Ain't a Captain America film. I'm still going to watch it because Captain America is dope as shit, man. I love Captain America. So I'm just saying. I'm a Captain America fan. So y'all, next Captain America. Once Captain America is in something, I'm going to watch it. Um... But uh, that's the character I most like in Marvel. And I think Marvel needs to understand that they're tending to different demographics and not everybody likes certain kinds of things and jokes. And Captain America, I love him the most because he doesn't joke much. He's very serious. Him and Falco. So I like that. I, like, I love them. Um, if, you, if you ask me who's my favorite Marvel character right now portrayed on the big screen, it's going to be Cap. Hands down. All right. We'll see what happens with Black Panther, though. Didn't particularly dig him in Civil War, but I definitely need to go see Black Panther next year. Shit, I hope you guys, I hope you guys can live up to the hype and, and actually reach people like me who really think of comic books as like fantasy and it's crappy and you, we don't really dig comic books. We feel it's for kids, you know what I'm saying? Even though the comics, man, they they had some elaborate stories and they really explored the human psyche a lot. Um, so yeah. I don't like hee hee ha ha uh, stories, and <laughs> for those of you who don't like hee hee ha ha stories, believe it or not, Justice League is going to give you what you want. I just want to say this: Cyborg is the joint. Cyborg is the joint. Cyborg is the, the freaking Borg, man. I love Cyborg. That's my boy. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just want, to, I want you guys to see my face as I fan out. Love Cyborg. He's my favorite. He's my favorite character, even though right now there's another favorite character, but I'm not going to say who it is. But Cyborg, man. Cyborg is the joint in Justice League. Cyborg is the bomb. All right? That's all I'm going to say about that. Love Cyborg. Cyborg is sick. You understand what I'm saying? Um, everybody, every actor who played their role in this movie did a fantastic job of embodying the character and it's interesting that what they said what's important you know what's interesting about this is it's a it's it's a sequel it's a follow-up to bvs this movie is literally a sequel of bvs this this movie is a trilogy and it was really important that wonder woman fit in between to have justice league and that was the plan all along by Zack snyder Zack snyder Look, man, I love Zack Snyder, man. Josh Whedon, Danny Elfman, and some of Junkie XL stuff is in there. What I tell you guys, Danny Elfman did a lot of the tracks, but he also did, he seemed to have done over some of the stuff that Junkie was doing as well. As Hans Zimmer stuff, I heard Sam Simmons, Hans Zimmer's themes throughout the movie and not just with the Superman theme and not just with the Wonder Woman theme, but with some other themes that Zack Snyder was doing in some of the other movies. Even some of the BVS stuff is inside of this movie. It's crazy, man. Shit, man, Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman is the dude. Jeez, man. Woo. 
Yeah. So I I went into this movie really <laughs> I didn't know what to expect because I did not spoil the movie for myself. That was the key. With Wonder Woman, I spoiled some of the movie for myself, so I didn't get that full impact. This movie, I did not spoil anything. And so I got the full impact. And with the audience there, they were like, boom, boom, when, you know, <laughs> when certain moments happen in this movie. And there are some moments in this movie when, you know, I heard some people say, oh, you know, I, I'm not going to even say it because I, I, there are some moments in this movie. But this movie is a Zack Snyder film, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And the emotional impact of certain parts of this movie is incredible for me. It was incredible. I love this movie. I love this movie. I got to see it again. But I got to take my time, let it digest. Besides that, because of religion and stuff, but with family and stuff, I don't violate certain religious practices by them. That's why I'm not going out to the cinema like that. But I got to see this movie again. I got to get it on DVD. I don't need no extended cut, folks. I don't need no extended cut. This movie was good enough for me. But if you're going to have an extended cut, please bring it for me. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. <laughs> Yo! Yo! Man! That's a great collaboration, man. 60 minutes, 21 seconds in. I'm still talking about this fucking movie, man. Justice League! <laughs> I'm satisfied. I'm, 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 I, it, it was like they thought about me when they were making this movie. And it was like, what does he like? I mean, I don't know how else to say it, man. I love this movie. I have to see it again for a number of things because there are a number of themes that I was looking at in this movie. And it seems as though it's, it's themes that are developed from BVS. So it's a continuity in that respect with themes. And I would love to see, hear what Samuel Arden has to say about that. I loved everything about this movie. I wish I could say something, but it would be a spoiler. <laughs> so I can't say shit. <laughs> You know, it's really, it's really, it's, it's kind of frustrating, but uh, at the same time, you know, it is what it is. You know, this is an unedited cut. I'm not going to be doing no more edits on this, but I will say this about Justice League. In terms of the acting, I'm going to talk about the different things. So the plot was good. It was a, it was a simple plot. It was, it was kind of, it was simple. It was a simple, well... It depends. You see, there's all kinds of things going on. It's a simple plot. It's a simple plot. It's kind of like A to B to C to D to E. It's a, it's very linear. It's kind of like Wonder Woman, right? But the nuance is in the emotion. Sort of again like Wonder Woman. The nuance is also in the deeper themes running along the simple linear plot. So definitely it's, it's much more linear than Batman v Superman. Definitely much more linear than Suicide Squad. Um, it's also, um, it's, it's actually not as minimalistic as, uh, Batman v Superman, right? It's more like Man of Steel. It gives me a Man of Steel vibe. Um, a Man of Steel vibe, yeah. But there, the early parts of it are a little quicker than the Man of Steel. Man of Steel takes a lot more time to develop certain things. The early parts of the movie are quicker. And as it comes to a head and you, you begin to realize, you begin to realize, uh, I, damn, I can't say things without spoiling the damn movie. So I have to, I have to kind of edit what I say. All right, so the cinematography was on point. I did say that some of the CGI was a bit raw. It was still a little bit crude. Um, and it is what it is. I mean, they were trying to, you know, do the, they do their stuff and try and get things on, on the mark. So some of the CGI is a bit crude. I'll agree with everybody on that. But it's not a whole bunch of CGI that's crude. And you remember I was talking about the uh, color tones and how you shouldn't have that purple stuff in there. Dude. 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 I can't, I can't say nothing without spoiling the movie. I, I feel so constricted. Dude. It worked. Let's just put it that way. It worked. Um, oh, man. Um, man. Don't want to... I, I, I class this movie as epic. Is it on the level of Batman v Superman in terms of plot and story? No. Is it on the level of a Man of Steel? A Man of Steel movie in terms of plot and story? Yes. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a lot coarser, though. The the, uh, the cinematography is a lot coarser. It's a little bit coarser. But they, they did a lot more with this movie. It's so many subtleties to this movie, man. They did a lot more. And the scope of the movie is bigger. So much bigger. And I think that's why it was a lot of work for the animators, I think. And so they didn't get everything on point like how they would have wanted to. Hopefully for the, the DVD, they can polish up. I hope they, they still do work on it and polish it up so that it looks really good. Uh, Steppenwolf as the villain. All right, let me, let, let me go through the different actors and, and uh, how good they were. I'm going to take about an hour on this because I think it's going to take a little while to get this out. All right, let me talk about the actors first. The actors, Sharon Hines as Steppenwolf. It was a fantastic job by Sierra Hines as an actor, okay, playing this character. Uh, Steppenwolf did look, um, he did look CGI. He did look CGI, all right? But he felt like a real character in the movie. So it was kind of like, you felt like he was a person. The parademons, we know they were CGI, but they felt like creatures. In fact, Steppenwolf actually feels like a creature more than he feels like CGI, to be honest with you. I saw this movie in 3D. I want to see it in 2D. All right. Another thing about the cinematography is sometimes, it, depending on what kind of stu uh, movie you go into theater, I can see how it can look a bit blurry if, you're, if you go into a movie theater where, one, it's not the right lighting in the theater, and two, where you're not getting the best resolution of film. So those are two very important points. So that's why some people said that to them, the action was blurry. But the action wasn't blurry for me. It was popping out on the screen and was looking really good because I went to pretty good, I pretty, pretty damn good theater. So it depends on what theater you go into. Also, I want to say that the lighting was just appropriate. It wasn't too dark. Just win. Just win. I give credit to you on that one because you had to do post production. And so it wasn't too dark. Even in Wonder Woman, it was a little too dark for me. So I couldn't see everything on the big screen. In this movie, the lighting was perfect. It was perfect. I saw this thing on a really good resolution high tech screen. I went to the first screening of this movie or the first viewing of this movie and the cinema was packed. I was like, Freaking hell! In the middle of the day, people took time off from their jobs and people came in. I was like, what the frick? Anyway, I got a good seat in the house. Very good seat in the house. Sat down. I met some people I knew and I started talking with them before the movie came out and stuff. So it was good. And my anticipation level for this movie was ridiculously high, okay? My expectations were zero. I didn't have any expectations for this movie because I like all movies, I go into them with no expectations whatsoever. I don't expect anything. I don't ask for anything. I don't ask the movie to do me anything. I just want to see the damn movie. So when I went into the movie, I was just wanted to see the movie and see where, where it takes me. I didn't know where it was going to take me. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know the story. I didn't know nothing. Now, for all those critics out there and people who've been following Justice League so long, they've got the movie spoiled for them a long time ago. So when they go into the cinema, they already know what the story is supposed to be. And so they start critiquing all bunches, all, a whole bunch of other stuff. You spoil the movie for yourself. You are the only person to blame. Okay? And that's why I, I've had a better experience with this movie than I had with Wonder Woman. Whereas I think both movies had a, basically a simple storyline. Because both stories are basically... It's, it's a simple story, more or less. Not... It, it, Suicide Squad had a simple story too, and it had a little plot twist and stuff. This movie is straightforward. It's kind of like Wonder Woman. There are some plot twists, but for the most part, it's a straightforward story. I like that. And because of that, this is a film I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. I don't care if you're a DCEU fan, hardcore, or you're not. I don't call this film a fun film. I don't think of it as that because... <laughs> There are different elements. As Zack Snyder film, dude. If you guys don't know a Zack Snyder film, I don't know what to say. But it has different elements. It has horror in it, scaring you. It has a little bit of levity. It has seriousness and stakes. It has a little bit of, um, what we call it? It's a, it's a little bit of a thriller, you know? It's that kind of movie. 
So it's got all kinds of different things, elements to it that make this movie so mm, juicy. But you have to not spoil the damn movie for yourself. If you've watched clips of this movie, you would have spoiled some of the good parts of the movie. That's just the way it is. And then, you know, because there's some, there's some really good parts of the movie. And I think, I, I'm glad I didn't watch the movie clips. I didn't go and watch movie clips, so I didn't get it spoiled for me. You know what I'm saying? But Steppenwolf, man, oh my God. As a villain, y'all got to be tripping. Y'all got to be tripping if y'all think Steppenwolf was a weak villain. That motherfucker wasn't weak at all. <laughs> Sorry about the expletives. But he wasn't weak at all. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right. Mm, I, I don't want to say no more about that because I'll spoil it again. I don't want to spoil it. So I thought Sierra and Hines did an excellent job with uh, Steppenwolf. Um, sort of like how Mark Ruffalo did it with the Hulk, except it wasn't as cartoony. Steppenwolf wasn't as cartoony as the Hulk. You know what I'm saying? You really took Step Steppenwolf seriously. You really felt the threat of Steppenwolf. And those freaking parademons. They weren't just fudge. <laughs> no, I, and you know the thing? Those parademons were, oh my fucking damn. Ah, excuse my cursing. I, sometimes I get, I get into explicit. I, I gotta, I just gotta go with this video. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not editing it. Um, you gotta excuse me for cursing. I'm sorry about that, folks. But I, this movie blew me away. Now, some people said they came out to sit a little bit disappointed and stuff. And they, not me. And you know why? Because, one, I didn't expect the greatest movie of all time. Even though right now I'm on such a high that I can even think it's that. Even though I know it's not. And the second thing about it is... I mean, I left this movie with this, a grin from ear to ear. And I was talking to guys. and I, Oh, man. This damn movie. Um, but... <laughs> you, you guys will understand what I'm talking about when you see the movie. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Alright? That's all I gotta say about that. Um, don't... If, don't let anybody spoil this movie for you. If you haven't, if you haven't seen this movie, don't get off of social media. If you have to get off of social media, do not let someone spoil this movie. If you have to wait till next week, especially Tom, Tom, I'm speaking to you, buddy. If you have to see this movie on Friday next week, man, I wish I had a way to send money to you so you could see the movie before next week. That's why I went the first I, day one. I was there to watch this movie. I don't want nobody spoil this movie for me. I don't want to take that experience from me. I heard some people talking some pessimistic shit. I just clicked off. I clicked off from the internet because I don't want to hear nobody spoil anything. I don't want anybody spoil anything. I don't care if you're excited. I don't want anybody spoil anything for me. And I got to see this movie a couple, at least. Oh my god, I don't know how many times I'm going to watch this freaking movie. I don't know how many times I'm going to watch this freaking movie. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Zack Snyder. <laughs> and now Just Whedon. Just Whedon. Just Whedon, man. Just Whedon, man. You need a medal, brother. You need a medal. I don't care what nobody said. Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns, I love you, man. I love you, dude. I love you. I love you. I see what you did. I see what you did. Man, I'm happy. God damn it. <laughs> Woo. Oh, man. This is like a dream come true for me. Because I saw how Zack Snyder came full circle with the whole story. You know. I can, I can see this thing in its, its entirety as well. You know. Oh, let me just go on. Because uh, I, I know I'm going to take about an hour, 45 minutes. Whatever, man. Let's just get it done. So, first of all. We were talking about acting. Sierra and Hines did a hell of a job. All right, this was a hell of a movie. It's a hell of a movie. It's a hell of a ride. That's what I would say. Hell of a ride for me. Um, still, a couple things I need to process about this movie. There's a lot I have to process still. Um, but it leaves you, man. If you are a DCEU fan and you like DCEU movies, you're gonna love this movie. You're gonna love this movie. If you're somebody who uh, likes superhero movies. You're going to love this movie because how it ends, how this league ends up being, you're going to love this movie. You're going to love this movie bad, man. You're going to really love this movie. If you, it, man, if you like the Justice League Unlimited and Justice League Animated Series, you're going to love this movie. If you like Justice League comic books, 
the the recent run of Justice League, and also if you like the uh, if you like the old Justice League comic books, even the new Fifty Two. I don't care which version of Justice League, all of them, because there are elements from all of them in this thing. Even all the way back to the first Justice League of America comics, JSA. You're gonna love it, Justice Society of America. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this movie. All right. Um, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So the acting. Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller as the Flash. The Flash we're seeing. He's a young Flash. All right. He's a young Flash. Um, there's a lot the young Flash still does not know, but he's exploring. Let's put it that way. And so what you see in this story, how this story begins with this young Flash, Ezra Miller kills it as the young Flash. He kills it as the young Flash. Now, some people say this is not a, this is not a comic book version of Barry Allen. I, 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 I disagree. Just as how we had uh, Christopher Nolan coming out with Batman Begins, filling in the gaps for aspects of Batman's story, this Barry Allen fills in the gaps for how Barry Allen became Barry Allen. The, the, uh, how Barry Allen became Barry Allen, you know. So, all of these movies, Zack Snyder is giving you how these heroes became heroes. That's, that's what's so cool about this shit. Um, Aquaman is not Aquaman. He's becoming Aquaman. Cyborg's not... Well, Cyborg is Cyborg. He, he can't be anything but Cyborg. But Cyborg is also becoming. Let's just put it that way. Alright? Cyborg is becoming. Wonder Woman was not Wonder Woman as you know her. Um, and like I said, I, I did all these videos on it. That Wonder Woman is not Wonder Woman as you know her. And when you see Wonder Woman in this movie... You know, this is for uh, John King, man. John King. When you see Wonder Woman in this movie, you're going to like her because she's going to be Wonder Woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Um, Batman is going to be Batman. The Batman you know. Um, but he's going to be Batman that he's the Batman you know. But he's going to be the Batman you know from the Justice League as well. Let's just put it out. Alright? Um, oh, who did I leave out? Did I leave out anybody? That's the five of them. Alright. Um, so, pretty much, Ben Affleck killed it as Batman. He killed it as Batman. He killed it as Batman. Freaking killed it as Batman. Um, oh my god. Ben Affleck killed it as Batman. Um, Gal Gadot killed it as Wonder Woman. Shit, she's she's Wonder Woman. Why are you gonna kill it as Wonder Woman? Um, um, Ezra Miller killed it as uh, Barry Allen. Uh, Ray Fisher killed it as Cyborg. I love this Cyborg. I love this Cyborg. I love this Cyborg. I love this Cyborg. This reminds me of Cyborg from Justice League War. Um, Cyborg from Teen Titans. The, the movie as well as Teen Titans, the series Teen Titans, not the one from uh, Cartoon Network, but Teen Titans that used to be on TV with um, Nightwing and they, that cyborg, the joint, he's the joint, Star Sapphire and they, uh, that cyborg, he's not, he's not, he's not, he, they took cyborg seriously, let's put it that way, he's not a jokey, jokey kind of guy, <laughs> and it, booyah, nah, he's not that kind of stuff, then we had, uh, uh, all right, all right, all right, Website. Yeah. All right. So that was the Justice League, and I, of course, we talked about Steppenwolf. Mm, Parademons were bad. Love the Parademons. They're badass. They're not just. They're not just. Uh, they're not just. Uh, they're not just uh, how do I put it? They're not just there to get killed. Trust me. <laughs> um. Uh. What else can I say without spoiling the movie? Shit. All right. Yes, I told you about the cinematography. I probably said this before. Sorry, guys. I'm not organized. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just blurting out shit, right? The cinematography on this movie, like I said, be, you know, besides, it, it's not major things with the CGI. Trust me, it's not major things. 
and you still feel like you're in this world, immersed in this world, and so on. It's just, you know, sometimes you see some things that are a little bit off, and you know it, you see it, and you ignore it. Trust me. Because you, it's not that big a deal. Trust me. It, it's not this big, glaring CGI that takes me out of the No, it's not like that. It's, it's good. It's good CGI. It's just not, it's still not finally tweaked properly. And I get it. It was last minute, and it takes like months to get the CGI right. So if you have to make adjustments, it, it takes a while. So I get it. I, I'm not. I'm not mad at it. I, I get it. it. It doesn't take too. Much, it doesn't take much for me for the story. Um, the cinematography was good. It was huge. It was better cinematography actually than Wonder Woman and Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. It was actually better cinematography. I. It not not necessarily in how it was shot, but in terms of the post editing where Josh Whedon added some extra elements or Zack Snyder. I don't know who did it, but um, I'm thinking Josh Whedon was involved in, in, in the post-production as well. And he tweaked some things and he added some things to it that was supposed to be added anyway. And some of the recent added things and the recent added footage, you could tell the difference because there was a difference in not so much color as in graininess, if you, if you understand what I'm saying, because it's supposed to be on film. And so you could tell where there was a slight differences. It's not something that you would notice off the top of your head, especially if you're involved in the story. You wouldn't really notice that, but you can you can kind of notice it. It's, it's the minor things. It's really like nitpicks right now. We're talking, um, but the CGI for certain things, for certain things, not necessary. It, uh, let me put it this way. Um, let me put it this way. This is what I would say. The CGI for certain things was not always consistent. That's the word. Because I could tell the post-production work, uh, they they couldn't get through all of it. I like how they wanted to. It's like they were racing against a clock. So I think that's what happened. And it's excusable. It doesn't really, it doesn't take from the story at all. Uh, when we talk about story and plot, like I said, the story is not simple like uh, Suicide Squad. But it is a straightforward, linear story moving forward in which there are a number of other layers and stories being told along that story. But it all keeps in a nice linear fashion like Wonder Woman. So they did a really good job. Joss Whedon did a hell of a job putting that together in that time space. That is so freaking difficult to do, especially as a second director following up on a first director having a mandate to do it in a certain time space. And I'm telling you, the time space was perfect. You could, if you did it a second longer, as much as fans are saying we would have loved to have more footage and they contradict themselves because they talk about Stephen Wolf being a weak villain, but yet I wanted to see more because you know you had to have more Stephen Wolf. Um, <laughs> you, you would realize almost immediately that the time space was perfect. It was perfect. I second guess Warner Brothers. They did the right job. They did the right thing. Um, other elements of this story that I need to talk about. Um, so, in terms of filmmaking, I think you also have to look at, you look at cinematography, you look at the story, the plot, how the characters serve the story and the plot, of course. Um, you look at the acting, and then the, the final thing I want to talk about in this movie, and I talked about the lighting and all that, the final thing I want to talk about in this movie was the fact that this was a superhero movie. This definitely was a superhero movie. And we finally come full circle to what superheroes are. And it basically completes that circle that's necessary for um, getting us to what people wanted to see, the superheroes that they wanted to see on the screen. Let's put it that way. Um, there's a lot more to it than that, but I, I, I'm, I'm trying to pick my words because I know <laughs> I don't want to, I don't really I don't really want to spoil anything about this movie. This movie is is wonderful, but I don't want to spoil anything about it. All right, all right. So that's basically it for Justice League. <laughs> you guys want to be like what? I'm like yeah. I mean, what more do you want me to say? Um, I can't say anything else without spoiling the movie. So it was like 40 minutes of just me smiling and talking to you guys. <laughs> I understand why the actors were so excited for people to see it. I'm not quite sure why the critics um, don't like this movie. I'm not really quite sure. Um, I'm trying to think of reasons 
for them not to like it. And maybe it's what some people saw and they thought about, you know, certain things happening in the movie and they probably didn't like that, but actually it makes perfect sense um, if you really reflect on it. That's all I got to say about that. But um, I don't think this could be a bad film because of cinematography and a few things that don't look um, completely realistic because the tone of this movie is a serious tone and it's a realistic tone. It's not a comedy. The, the reason Thor Ragnarok can get away with you know, subpar CG and not really operating according to the laws of physics is because it's not, it's not portraying realism. It's fantasy, right? So I can get away with that. With this movie, the critics may actually look at it in terms of its realism, because that's what it is, it's realism. It's what we call super or hyper realism. That's what this movie is, which is what makes it so believable. And may think that, okay, this CG here doesn't fit into that. Like Steppenwolf, you know, he kind of looks like a video game. That's what they keep on saying, which to me, it that that to be a damn good video game. <laughs> Because that CG is all on point. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's really serious. And Steppenwolf's not a human. He's not a human. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what they're looking for in CG. But uh, maybe they know the behind the scenes that it's, 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 it's completely computer generated. and It's not mocap. And Sarah Hines wasn't. Maybe that's what they're looking at. I don't know. But at the end of the day, anyway, I, I, I don't know if it wasn't in mocap. It could have been mocap. But whatever it was, I got to say, man. Shit, that shit was on the point. Steppenwolf was on point. Anyway, guys, I got to wrap it up for you guys right now. 41 minutes and 40 seconds. I really had a excellent time with this movie. And you know I'm not a guy that laughs a lot. Uh, and I didn't really laugh a whole lot in this movie. But the difference is this movie wasn't based on comedy. It wasn't based on laughs. It started off quite seriously, actually. It had a serious tone to it. And almost like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman also had a serious tone. And there was, you know, there was speckle inside of it, humor. And the humor was mainly because of interactions of different types of personalities and characters made it um, humorous. But for the most part, to me, it wasn't a very humorous movie. Again, Wonder Woman wasn't a very humorous movie. So it makes sense. Was it an adventure movie? Yeah, this is an adventure movie. Batman v Superman was a drama. This movie is an adventure. You know, there's peril, there's stakes, there's all these kinds of things. It's an adventure movie. Um, and it's, it's very... Uh, it's, it's very interesting, man, because it's about relationships. What I love about movies like these, you don't see your superheroes just standing around talking to each other aimlessly, kind of like. and just It's not that. And you can tell... That there's circumstances happening. And whenever they are dialoguing with one another, you still feel the stakes involved. You feel the stakes and the peril involved. Yet they have all these other things they have to deal with. And the, you can feel the clock ticking on them. That's the beauty of these kinds of movies. You feel the tension. That's what I was talking about with Eldris Alber. When Eldris Alber was on screen, you felt the danger. You saw him looking around him and he's trying to get people out. And he's, he's looking at the danger, the stakes. You feel the stakes and the tension with Eldris Alva's acting. That, that's what was missing from the other characters in Thor Ragnarok. Whereas in Justice League, at no point in time did these characters feel like the clock wasn't ticking on them. You felt that sense of urgency with Batman. You felt, um, you knew it was just a couple of hours they had. And you heard it over and over again. No, you didn't only hear it, but you saw them acting. They weren't, they weren't standing around. They were moving. They were doing things all the time in the movie. And, and the movie moved at a rapid pace to give you that feeling again of tension and urgency. And sometimes you're like, wait, 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 wait. I want to hold back. I want a little bit more of this moment. You know, I don't want to talk about the moments in the film. I, 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 I almost was tempted to. But you, you want to... Um, you kind of want to hold back the moment, but then you have to move forward because you realize time's against these characters. 
and you got that pressing sense of urgency in the film as it moved along. I love that. I know critics may want to savor some things, suspend time, suspend belief, and dwell on a point. Maybe that's what their problem is, and they call it a mess of a film. Or it could be that they just had too much knowledge of the film and the process behind it. And so they lost the magic of the theatrical performances and the theatrical uh, rendition that was presented to them that people who didn't spoil themselves with this movie will completely appreciate. I can see the average audience member taking in Justice League and enjoying it. Of course, the Rotten Tomato scores for some people will put a damper on them and they'll go into the film narcissistic and picking at the film. And that's their problem. It wasn't mine. <laughs> I enjoyed the movie fully. I'm going to go see it again. Thank you, Zack Snyder. Thank you, Zack Snyder, for giving me something for my life. You did touch my life. You changed my life. I want to thank you, Zack Snyder. Um, I want to thank Joss Whedon for stepping in. I'm sorry, Joss Whedon. I doubted you. I was I, no, Actually, I trusted you and Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman did a hell of a freaking score. My God. Woo! Danny Elfman. All right, man. All right, Danny Elfman. I'm going to hand it to you. One more clap. Oh, my God. Now, for those people who are saying that, you know, it could have been better, I don't want to cuss you out, but no, it couldn't have been better. This is, this is the best it gets. This is as good as it gets. Maybe you had expectations of something else. Maybe you thought this movie was supposed to bring this and bring that and bring that. I could, I could, fake, I could, I could name a couple things I know some of you wanted to see happen, and it didn't happen. All right? But see, I don't go into movies predicting what it must do to please me. I go into movies to find out what the movie has to say. And when it's not spoiled for me, I have a blast. But it's not just about fun. This movie wasn't... It was, I wouldn't call this movie a fun film. It, it, it was spectacular. It was... Um, it, was, it, was, it, was it was grand. It was epic. I'll give you that. Um, would I call it fun? Nah, not really. You know I mean, you could call it that if you want. I mean... But not, not not Thor Ragnarok fun. <laughs> I don't think of it as that. Um, the Indiana Jones fun? Hell yeah. This is a... I know. I know. It, it reminds me of Indiana Jones. It's kind of sad to say that. Because, <laughs> because uh, I said that about a Marvel film as well, didn't I? <laughs> but it reminds me of Indiana Jones to some degree. It's in a, in a different kind of way. The peril and the... You know... The, yeah, it's kind of like an Indiana Jones film. It is kind of like that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised they borrowed from Indiana Jones. Yeah, it's kind of like Indiana Jones, and that that's a good that's a good thing I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say something bad because you see, I still have a smile on my face. Just imagine watching this trilogy now. Oh my god! But anyway, it sets up for the Aquaman films. I got a big smile on my face because I know Aquaman is gonna be the bomb. After seeing this, I don't doubt Warner Brothers no more. I see where they were going. I see where they're heading. I trust them. When you guys see this video with a big smile on my face, this is not faking. I'm not faking it. I'm not trying to defend. If that, if if Justice League was crap, I was going to come on here and say it's a load of crap. All right? I can't say that. I honestly can't say that. Um, I am happy. I am happy. I am happy. I have to apologize to Josh Wheaton. I have to apologize to Danny Elfman for doubting this guy. This guy comes through, and he came through. He came through. Um, ah, of course. Gotta love Jack Snyder. Junkie XL hooking up with Gary uh, Jr. Gary Smith Jr., I think is his name. Um, hooking up, you know, with... Uh, there's a number of other artists... That perform in here. There are other pieces from Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL's in there. Man, I love, I love this, I love this, I love this film. I love this film. I can't get, I can't say enough good things about this film. I'm sorry, man. I, that's how I feel. That's how I feel as a DCEU fan. I feel good about this film. You know, we had a discussion. I had some discussions with some of you subscribers about the direction WB was going. You know, this film did not let me down. It did not let me down. I'm happy. I would love to talk spoilers with you guys and go deep with you guys, but we're going to have to wait. We're going to wait at least a week. Maybe next week, 
Saturday or Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do some spoilers of this movie. I got so much to say. I gotta see this movie again. I gotta see this movie again. I got so much to say. Oh gosh. Ah! Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Zack Snyder. My brother. I love you. I love you, my brother. Thank you. All right, guys. And the nice thing about this movie, you can bring your kids to see it. There's one or two curse words in there. Not F words, but I think Ben Affleck says shit once or bitch or ass. I can't remember which one it was. There is at least one or two curse words in there. But for the most part, it's clean. All right. PG-30 movie, yes. A little bit of graphic stuff going on in there. Uh, I think Whedon diluted down certain uh, very graphic scenes that are probably too dark for people to see. You can bring your whole family to see Justice League. Definitely, you can bring your whole family. It still, however, has adult themes in there, and it also has kind of like Wonder Woman, but also kind of like uh, Man of Steel. Man of Steel and Wonder Woman. It's, it's kind of like Man of Steel and Wonder Woman in the sense that they do have some very violent things going on in that movie, but they try to shield younger Miles from seeing the, the graphic parts of it. So they kind of keep the graphic nature of things to a minimum. So it's, it's PG-13. It's a hard PG-13, but yet it's palatable. Kind of like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is a hard PG-13. It's a hard PG-13. You know what I'm saying? They don't show skin, but you know, they don't show nudity and that kind of thing, but it's, it's pretty rough. Well, similarly, this movie is a hard PG-13, like Wonder Woman and Man of Steel. Man of Steel is a hard PG-13, but they try to, even though there's a lot of, there's a lot of violence and graphic violence in this, but they try to sometimes remove the real graphic stuff, because I'm pretty sure this could have gone rated R. This movie could have been rated R easy, but I think Whedon kind of cut it and trim it, and Zack kind of cut it and trim it a certain way, so that it didn't end up being that way. Yeah, man, I got so much to say. Oh, by the way, the visual effects on this freaking movie. Visual effects is not necessarily CGI. It's, it encompasses many things. But the visual effects on this movie were off the charts. And the camera angles. The camera angles on this movie. The way how that camera was, was used. Jeez and ages. And even the CGI on this movie and just the way how I can't talk about specifics, so I'm not going to say nothing, but this, 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 the, the way how they did the CG for certain things in this movie was off the freaking charts. <laughs> That's all I can say, man. I really wish I could say more, but we'll go into the spoiler review. The stuff was crazy. You know, I heard certain things about certain things, and I can't, I can't say nothing. I can only say it like that. I'm sorry, guys, man. I really wish I could say something, but I can't really say much. Um, you know, I heard certain things about certain things in this movie, and honestly, those were not true at all. Let me just put it that. Just put that to sleep. Uh, you know, I want to say stuff. The images are popping in my head, and you say like, I can see the stuff, but I can't say much about it. Because it's just a lot about this movie. I can't say. I am not going to spoil it for you. I'm not going to be one of those people spoiling this movie for you. I'm trying to tell you certain things about this movie without spoiling it. You know? You go in there. Don't have no expectations for nothing. Just go in there to see where this movie goes. Sit down and just go with the movie. Let the movie show you where it And if you want to try and predict where this movie is going to go and piece things together, you can do that too. But it's going to piece it together for you anyway. It's not like BVS where you have to piece together stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, man, I love this movie. I love this movie. It explains a lot. It explains a lot about a lot of things. That's all I'm going to say about that. I feel like, it feels like you know my enthusiasm for Star Wars. It's, it's really, it kind of reminds me of a Star Wars movie, actually. Justice League does kind of remind me of a, a Star Wars movie. Huh. Interesting. But the journey, man... The journey has just begun, but the journey is beautiful. The journey is beautiful. That's all I got to say about that. On that note, I am excited for the future of the DCEU. Love it. Don't have to leave it at all. It's in safe hands. Did I doubt you, Jeff Jones, because of the last Green Lantern movie? Yes, I did. I am sorry. I apologize. You did. You're successful in writing Wonder Woman. You're successful in Justice League. You guys need to get a thumbs up from me. A big high five. Man, you know, 
come together right now over me come together right now over me Hey, pure fire! Yeah, ninja. Yeah, man. It was, it was dope. It was dope. You guys have a great one.